All right, so welcome. So this is a video with regards to proportion, and in particular, trying to model proportion uh, increases and decreases. So any proportion problem can be placed in the y is equal to kx format. So if you are not familiar with this, this x that you see right here, this is your starting point that you begin with and that you want to be able to scale up and down by a certain amount. So proportionally make it bigger or smaller and then we will see what happens to it. And that bigger or smaller is simply done by this k. Now once we would multiply the two we would get our actual answer back and we could see if it gotten bigger or smaller right here. So that would be our y. So let me just talk about an example and for instance you see this 100 milliliters here that 100 milliliters represents volume and let's say that would be our starting point now we can increase this 100 milliliters by a certain amount so let's say by 20 percent or we can decrease it by 20 percent now if you just begin okay and let's say you start with 100 milliliters then you know that this would be the, the total of what you have is 100. And now you can, of course, increase it or decrease it. So we can increase it or decrease it. And I said, let's say by 20%. Okay, so just for the, the sake here, I will uh, simply work maybe with the increase. Now, if I have 100% of my total amount and I want to increase it by 20%, then if you convert all of this back into, let's say, decimal, you know that 100% divided by 100 is just simply 1. Now, increasing would just mean plus 1, and then converting the 20% would simply be 0 0.2. So if you increased it by 20%, now if I add this up right here, you know that this would be 1.2 or simply as we could have just kept it as percent, it would have been 120% of what you started with. And for this volume, that's not really that difficult. You know, if you have 100 milliliters and you increase it by 20%, okay, you will notice that you get 120 milliliters back. So what I like to do with all of these problems is as I increase and decrease, I always kind of begin with a starting point and visually see what happens. So let's say I started with 100 milliliters and then I just start branching off. So on the upper branch, I always ask myself, okay, so am I increasing or am I decreasing this and by how much? So in this case, I am increasing, okay, so let's say by 20%. On the lower branch, what I will do is I will simply take, okay, so this right here, okay, so I'm going to take that, okay, so that would be what I put on the lower branch, and that is what happens after the increase in this case, or it could have been a decrease. So here, what I will do is this is 100%, okay, so plus 20%, and that would tell me exactly what has happened, okay? So to that 100 milliliters. Now, if we would input this in, okay? So this, we already said, okay, if we change it all back, this is just one plus 0 0.2. I'm gonna keep it in brackets here. And this, of course, is just 0 0.2 right there as decimals. So now what I have is, I can tell you exactly what has happened to that 100 milliliters. Okay, so if I take that 100 milliliter right here, okay, and let's say I go along this path and I wanted to know what happened after the increase, then all I have to actually do is I have to take my 1 plus 0 0.2 and then simply multiply it by 100, and that will tell me what the actual result was. So this is my y, or well, in this case, it's just volume. So if you do that, you would get 120 milliliters because we were talking about okay, the actual volume itself. Now, if it's a decrease, 
okay, let's say by 20%, then the only difference okay, would be that your plus would simply change to a minus. And indeed, if you take 100% minus 20%, you'll just be left with 80%. And if you would have multiplied, you would have got 80 milliliters left. So if you're looking at this, okay, so this scaling factor of K, okay, that we have um, is nothing else but simply 100%, okay, plus or minus some percentage point, okay. So where else can this be applied? Well, a, a very common theme of increasing and decreasing is, for example, with discounts and taxes. So if you kind of think about it, let's say that you had, let's make it $150. Now, as you know, sometimes you'll walk into stores and then maybe they'll tell you that there is a discount and that discount, whatever it may be, let's say it's 5%. Now, a discount is, of course, a decrease by a percentage. So your 150% your, sorry, $150 is just 100% of the total. Your discount is nothing else but a subtraction, and this would be 5%. Now, if you change that into decimal, this is just 1 minus 0 0.05, of course, and this becomes your constant, okay? And what you can do is you can simply say, all right, so I have $150. Okay, again, I always like to branch them off. I have a discount of 5%. Okay, so that would be that. And then on the lower branch, what I have is 1 minus 0 0.05. And that particular branch, if I multiply, okay, so these two right there, okay, if I take that and this, okay, the multiplication of them would be simply 100. Okay, so 50, and then the multiplication, and let me shift this over, 1 minus 0 0.05, and once you multiply, you know exactly how much you had left after the discount. So this itself is the discount, that we can calculate, so that's the amount of discount, and then this right here, okay, would simply tell you how much you would have after the discount. So if you would take Let's say, let's say my calculator right here. Okay, so we have one minus the five percent discount multiplied by one hundred fifty. Okay, and that would be one forty-two point five or fifty. So that's what would happen after the discount. Now, along with discounts, of course, there are taxes and taxes instead of subtraction okay is simply addition because we are adding things but you would do them exactly in the same way so as you can see a discount is a decrease and taxes are an increase now these increases and decreases that we have with respect to these proportions okay it doesn't don't have to just happen with volume or money they can even happen with medication flows so you can imagine, okay, so that what you would have, okay, so let's say that you are setting up an IV or something like that, and maybe it is flowing at 10 milliliters, okay, so per hour. And again, you can ask yourself, you know, what do you want to do to this? Okay, maybe you want to decrease the medication because the patient doesn't need as much, okay, so decrease, okay, would simply be subtraction by a certain percentage or amount, and then an increase, maybe you want to increase the medication because maybe the patient's on painkillers and they feel more pain, okay, so that would be a positive. So this is just an introductory, okay, video with regards to proportion and setting it up as an increase and decrease, and these branchings that we have, okay, I will illustrate in particular examples, okay, that you will see, and I'll create the link to this video as well so that you can take a look at a few examples like that. So I hope that you found this introduction useful with regards to increasing and decreasing okay, amounts, if it's volume, money, rates, or anything like that. Okay, thank you for watching.